Hello everyone, this is Phoenix Tremaine and I'm here with some more entertainment news. Um, I just talked, uh, if you haven't done so, please take a minute to subscribe. If you can watch this whole video, there's no reason why you shouldn't subscribe to me. Um, but I'll be doing lots of entertainment news, uh, reviews, movies, TV shows, and you know, just hitting you with a lot of good stuff that I do on other social media that I'm now doing on YouTube. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. So we're going to get right into it. Ja Rule. <laughs> now, Ja Rule and 50 Cent, we have known for a really long time that Ja Rule and 50 Cent, you know, been beefing. When 50 first hit the scene, he targeted, just like a lot of rappers do, a lot of rappers see whoever's on top and they try to take that spot. And that's what happened. Ja Rule was hot with Ashanti. You know, he was had become the ladies' man um, type music. That a lot of women were going for and then 50 cent just came in and destroyed his career you know made fun of him clowned him and made him made it hard for him to get any work or sell any music so ja Rule went from being one of the hot, hottest rappers you know to one of the most non-existent rappers now their their uh feud has been reignited um, ja Rule asked everyone to start calling 50 Cent Tickle Booty <laughs> and refer to um, 50 Cent as a power bottom. And I guess he refers to power as Murder Inc. TV. So um, Ja just basically did a one, two, three punch. You know, he hasn't dropped a diss track yet, but I'm sure that's coming. But, you know, on Twitter, he, he, you know, shots fired. You know, well, we really shouldn't say shots fired in a situation where, you know, Biggie, Tupac, you know, stuff can get out of, out of control. We don't want it to go there. We don't want literal shots fired. But, you know, he, he put out there, you're a lyricist, you know. You're out there, if you're a hip-hop artist, when somebody comes for you, you're supposed to step up and do what you got to do. You know, but all of 50 has sort of evolved. Like, I think if 50 drop an album, it may or may not sell because his music has been hit or miss. You know, with the fans, he's older now. And I think he's, people know him for his acting now. He just released a movie um, and they know him for power. You know, he know him for fitness water. Think they know him for Vivica Fox eating his booty. But, but you know, you know 50 Cent for a lot of things. But when it comes to music, um, I think that that ship has sailed. So I don't know how much, but he'll probably drop a diss track about Ja Rule because he's 50 Cent. So at Ja Rule asked everyone to call him Tickle Booty. He referred to him as a power bottom and then referred to Power as Murdering TV, as a Murdering TV series. The article says that Ja is coming for 50 because 50 came for Diddy. Okay, so let's talk about that. Now, uh, Diddy, Puff Daddy, whatever you want to call him, Sean Combs, he has been suspect for a long time, like a long time, like back in the Mace days. But, um, you know, he's been with Cassie forever, his baby mama forever, dropping kids left and right. One of his kids is a model now. So, you know, the question isn't is 50, is if uh, Puffy's gay, it's more of if he's bi, idea, whatever, which, I mean, who gives, who gives a, you know what, I mean, I say let people be people, let people do what they're going to do. But um, Diddy raised a bunch of eyebrows when he, did a, um, I think it was at the Breakfast Club or something, and he made some comments that seemed like he was coming on to, he was high, and he was coming on to one of the guys at, at the, that was um, at the Breakfast Club too. And I didn't watch the full video. I just saw, he just, he started to go there, and I said, okay, I'm good. <laughs> you know, I just shared it on my social media, let my, you know, social media, I, I like to call um, people who follow me the Phoenix Force because I'm Phoenix Tremaine. And, you know, you're the Phoenix Force. So I let the Phoenix Force come in and comment and say what they got to say. A lot of people's like, you know, 
you know, we all know about Diddy, ain't nothing new. Um, some people were like, well, he didn't mean it that way. But 50 Cent kind of got in his, um, decided to add his two cents to the story. So, um, because he said Diddy came on to him. So, um, uh, 50 said that Diddy came on to him by asking him, asking to take him out shopping. 50 went on the Breakfast Club to say, I mean, sorry, Diddy did go on the Breakfast Club to say it did happen, but he only made the offer because he's a nice guy. Um, so Diddy's like, you know, I saw 50, thought he might want some clothes, and, you know, i go take him shopping. <laughs> really? Oh, you slipping, man. You slipping. You know, I could understand if he said it to Ja Rule, because, you know, Ja Rule, I, I forgot which, which rapper had a, a reality show. One light-skinned dude had a reality show, and Ja Rule was on there looking like who did it and why. He needed a haircut. He looked homeless. And, you know, I could understand if Diddy saw Ja and, like, you know, I know you ain't got money like you used to have, you know, you know, let's go shopping, you know, you know, get you right. But 50 is a millionaire that constantly throws his money up in people's faces and takes pictures of it and posts it on Instagram and it memes and whatnot. So you're asking a millionaire if you want to, that you want to take him shopping. I can understand if you said, hey, I'm a designer. I got some new looks. You know, are you interested in, you know, seeing what we got? That's a whole nother thing, you know, because that could be more of a marketing thing. If you got 50 Cent wearing Sean Combs designs, then you can make some money off of that. But if you like, you know, hey, what's up? You want to go shopping? <laughs> that That's like a, that's a sugar daddy move. But when the baby already got sugar... It's kind of hard to be the daddy. So, yeah, that happened. Um, but, you know, Jai said that he didn't like 50 going after uh, um, Puffy, insinuated that he was gay. And so that's why he came off with all his tickle booty, power bottom stuff. So... So what do you think about this? On my social media platforms, um, people were basically saying that it just sounds like a, a bunch of, um, I, I don't want to offend anybody. You know, let's just say, because you can go on my social media and read yourself, but but they basically were saying that it sounds like, you know, um, people in their feelings after having done things with each other read between the lines um but we're gonna move on so because i've got some more some more news i want to post but i'm separating the videos because you can get to see what you really came for and don't have to wait a long time before i get to it so the last thing i'm going to talk about on this video because i'm going to combine two entertainment subjects is tracy ellis ross versus monique so online um a lot of people on Facebook were, um, there was a, like, there's like a meme going around or, or article going around where it literally says Tracy Ellis Ross versus Monique. If you care about Tracy Ellis Ross story and you back her, then why aren't you backing Monique? You know, and it really looks like they're doing like a light skin, dark skin thing. We don't want to go there. But um, it's, it's sort of race baiting a little bit. If you look, if you saw the article, and you saw the pictures. It is a little race baitish, but um, we all know that um, a story came out with Tracy Ellis Ross where she's negotiating her blackish contract and she does not get the same amount of money that Anthony Anderson gets. If you watch the show Blackish, which I do watch Blackish, it's a hit or miss show. Their episodes are either really, really good or they suck. It, there's no in between. There's no okay blackish episode. Is either really good, or it, it just sucks. And um, 
her character is huge on the show. She's not like some of these sitcom wives that are there that kind of show their face, but it's the, the husband or the father that, you know, the show's dedicated to him and she's just kind of like a like a little little extra on a set. No, she's just a little minor supporting character. No, they have whole stories revolving around her, whole episodes revolving around her. Postpartum depression was the big one this year, along with a few others. And, you know, her transitioning from being a doctor to a housewife to now wanting to be an author. So, you know, they're showing her character having a journey. And the journey is no bigger than Anthony Anderson's journey, which his character isn't really on a journey. I think the most he's done this year is find out he had diabetes. But, you know, his character is, of course, a main character. But he's equal to her as a viewer watching the show. He's equal to her, so he, they should have equal pay, in my opinion. So, and they both came, it's not like she was a nobody. People, everybody knew who she was, whether they knew it was Diana Ross' daughter, whether they knew her from girlfriends, you know, well, that's it. But, but, but girlfriends was on for like, for like almost a decade or like a decade or something like that. So she had a following. And um, I really think that she should get the same thing Anthony Anderson is getting because she's putting in just as much work on the show. And there was a, a report that said, and this one is coming from, um, it was a report that was said that Tracy said if she does not get salary parity with Anthony Anderson, she was going to work less and so that put her in less episodes so that she can go off and find work somewhere else to make up the difference. Um, now, and then, and then of course we all know Monique, with the whole Netflix thing where she said, you know, they offered Amy Schumer $11 million. She, Amy Schumer got $13 million. Um, and then Chris, Chris Rock and, and Dave Chappelle got $20 million each. And they told her she was a legend and she feels she should be getting a legend skit. They only offered her $500,000. And so she's like, we, I want you to boycott, hey loves, I want you to boycott Netflix. So, I'm not boycotting Netflix, no. Now, and here's why. Before you get up in, in your feelings, if you're about to get up in your feelings, they got She's Gotta Have It. They got um, Dear White People. They got Luke Cage. And they have a whole section of black movies in, in black shows, including, like, the UK show Chillin' Gum. You know, so, yeah. So, you're asking me not to support... Um, Will Smith production company, including that movie Bright, where uh, he's going to be doing more stuff with Netflix. So I don't support Will, Will Smith, who's a, um, working with Netflix. You asked me not to support Spike Lee, who's working with Netflix. You're not asking me to support Shonda Rhimes, who got a $100 million deal from Netflix. She's getting $25 million for the next four deals plus the back end. So I, you don't even want me supporting Shonda Rhimes because you felt you got lowballed. Because they didn't feel that you were the star that you think you are. I already did a video on Monique. I'm not going to go there again. Um, but now people are comparing Tracy Ellis Ross saying that she would want to work less so that she can make more money. Because she's not getting the same pay as Anthony Anderson. With Monique saying she's not getting the same pay as other comedians. And they're saying, why are people siding with Tracy Ellis Ross? when you know versus Monique what's the difference well I just told you what the difference is okay Tracy Ellis Ross she's working on a show where she is doing as just as much work as Anthony Anderson she should be getting the same pay as him because she's just as big of a draw as him and she is getting award after award after award when the Emmys and whatnot for Blackish so yes she should get half Monique, we ain't seen you since 2008. Every time we see you, you're complaining about Tyler, Oprah, um, Netflix, um, who else? Lee Daniels, um, being blacklisted. I don't see you doing no comedy. I know you're torn on comedy and you on different stages and you still out there doing, doing that. But, you know, 
I don't see you doing anything relevant in 2018. The last relevant you did was in 2008. Blackbird was on Netflix. They got the numbers. I don't know if Blackbird or whatever Monique shows that they had on Netflix, because they did have some on there, you know, wasn't drawn in viewers. And they said, look, she's already got stuff on Netflix that nobody's watching. So why are we going to give her all this money? We don't, Netflix don't talk about money, ratings, none of that. So we don't know what calculations went into them offering 500000 But I do know there's a distinct difference between Tracy Ellis Ross' situation, where she's working on, on that uh, show, and we can see that she's doing, she is legitimately worth just as much as Anthony Anderson the show, because we can see her actual work. Monique, you need to come back. You were blacklisted. You know, are you, I mean, how many people are going to just like run and watch a Monique special just because she's on Netflix? You know, they don't know that. We don't know that. So the only way we can really know is if you had taken that deal, flipped it, as many people have said, and showed this is me, I'm back, I'm still funny. Here I am, and then negotiated a higher salary for the next one, saying, look, I brought all these people, all these ratings, you know, because there's a lot of people with an Oscar that can't sell a movie. There's a lot of people with an Oscar that can't get a job. Even, I always point out, like, Marissa Tomei. People thought she was going to be the next big thing after she went from a different world right to an Oscar-winning role. And we, what, we just seen her again in, like, Spider-Man Homecoming? <laughs> you know, and she's not even the main character. So Marissa Tomei has worked throughout the years, but it is sparring me. She has not done anything major from Mark Hunters and Vinny to Spider-Man Homecoming as far as like big blockbuster stuff. Okay, she's Aunt May. You know, she's not like a major Spider-Man character brought to life. Like so somebody with powers or something. Somebody's going to be integral to the story. You know, so, you know, Monique, it, the two don't compare. Now, I'll end this with, with uh, Tracy. Um, her She commented on the situation. Tracy says that the report about her salary was wrong and she did not threaten to leave the show or reduce her role on the show to make more money. She said that she was in contract negotiations like every actor and that's all it was. It was just... You know, contract negotiation tactics. Period. And, you know, she she got, she probably got what, she may not have gotten uh, what Anthony got, but she probably got pretty close because she's happy with whatever deal she made with Blackish. So, you know, but it don't compare. So, what do you think about these two stories? Um, ja Rule um, and 50 Cent. Um, feuding over Diddy and Tracy Ellis Ross versus Monique are these two different situations or you know or are you on their side or do you think I'm right do you think I'm wrong um, tell me in the comment section and you, you can follow me subscribe to me hit that bell so you know when I drop a new video